Business Development. Hope you're all having a great day. And so um, uh, today um, I want to cover just kind of, uh, I don't know how many of you, I can't see everybody, so you'll have to just kind of let me know, but uh, how many of you have a plan on what you're wanting to do in the next 12 months? I saw Derek raise his hand. Anybody else? I'm working on one. Putting working on one. So that's what we're going to kind of do today. So today I'm going to talk about setting like a 12 month goal. And then we're going to talk about how we're going to get there. And then I'm going to go through some of the um, different uh, uh, pillars of business, if you will, and kind of give an overview of them. And most importantly, the, the thing is, no matter what level agent you are, if you're brand new in the business or even if you're 15 years in the business, um, this is something that you should, should always be in front of you. You should always be knowing where you're going, how you're getting there, always be knowing your numbers and things like that. So we're going to talk about tracking your numbers here shortly. But the very first thing that I want to start with, and every single one of you hopefully you're going to share with me, um, is exactly what it is that you want to accomplish. If today is day one and we're going to set a goal for the next 365 days, we're going to set a 12 month goal from this moment. Um, I'd like to know if it's a unit goal or a dollar figure, what you'd like to accomplish in the next 12 months. So whoever would like to start first or share with me, please share with me. Well, um, I'm Sylvia. I would like to restart my business. Perfect. Uh, I've taken a lot of time off. I've been in the business for over 12 years, and for a while I was doing really, really great. Uh -huh. uh, then my mom got sick, then my dad got sick, and now that my dad has passed, I'm taking care of his wife. And so it's just difficult. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and life happens, right? And 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 it's easy to get distracted from, from the business. And of course, these are important things that you have to take care of and deal with. Um, but now that you're ready to go, what are you thinking to accomplish in the next 12 months? What would you like to do? Well, I'd like to do more business than I've done in the last five years put together because I really haven't done anything in the last five years. That, that look <laughs> so like? I really don't have like a number in my mind. I just know I'd like to progressively get better. Okay. Well, what I'd like to do, there's a reason that I'm, I'm, I'm pressing you for that number is because it's, it's, you know, um, it's important to have some sort of goal, some sort of number that you can go after. It doesn't, it can change, but, but it, it just helps um, in reaching your goal by having a specific number. So in the last five years, what would you say you, you did in the last five years? Um, Probably maybe 25. So I would like to do at least two to three a month for the next 12 months. Perfect. So would you say um, if it's two to three a month, how about if we use 24 transactions in the next 12 months? That works. Okay, perfect. So if each of you have a notebook, I encourage you to write this down in a notebook, okay? Um, when I started in this business, I'll give you a little background on me just so you guys can know where I'm coming from. So um, obviously, if you don't know who I am, I'm Michael Marlowe. I'm Director of Business Development with my home group. I've been in real estate over 17 years. I've been fortunate to do all aspects of real estate. So I was a lender for over eight years. Um, I, I was uh, uh, flipped homes with an investor for three years. And then I've been a licensed real estate agent for over eight years and I've done all aspects of real estate. So not just doing real estate transactions. Um, like my first year, I was still working with my investor, uh, but I still did 10 transactions, real estate transactions, my first year in the business. My second year in the business, um, I did over 27 transactions in the business. And then I started doing business development, which is what I currently do today, as well as real estate. So I just closed a deal two weeks ago. I have another new listing that I have now. So I, I still, so those of you that, you know, we're going to talk about time blocking. If any of you know that how much I do, I do probably about, wear about five different hats here at the company and I still manage to get real estate in. So um, we're going to talk about time blocking and productivity here later on. But my point is I'm very versed in real estate. I've been doing this a long time. I'm one of the trainers here at my home group. So not only do I do the business development class or other classes that I teach through the workshops as well as the UX training course that some of you I think are interested in. That is an eight week training course that gets very detailed into building a business for your real estate career. Um, but that is a little background on me. Um, 
So when I started this business, when I first started, I actually didn't have any money. I was literally broke. I had to borrow 80 bucks from my mom to get 10 open house signs to start my real estate career. So even though I was doing all that transitioning, I made a lot of money in loans. Uh, when I got out of the loan business is when the economy just tanked in 2009, 2010, back then. And then I was, uh, I worked with an investor as a project manager, barely getting by, uh, but I learned a tremendous amount in the investing world and how that all worked. And then when I got my real estate license right at the end of that, um, I still hadn't caught up. So even what I was making uh, with the investor was just barely getting by and still behind on the bills I had that all accumulated from my divorce, all that. I'm not going to spare you all the details, but it was a rough time back in 2008, 2009, 2010. Um, but what I can tell you is that when you have a clear plan, and this is what I'm going to get to today, when you have a clear path of where you want to go and you just start making steps in that direction, it's, it's, and you're committed, it's, it's truly tremendous what you can accomplish. So uh, again, like when I started, I borrowed 80 bucks, didn't have anything. I almost gave up three months into it. I'm glad I didn't because I kept moving forward. I kept doing the things that uh, I was committed to doing. I was truly committed to making those that stayed happen. And then it happened and I closed 27 deals that year. So um, this is kind of how I did it. Um, and this is also the information I'm sharing with you today is through others that helped me get there too. So um, through other real, a tremendous real estate agents that I've met over the years um, with far more experience than I had that shared their experience with me and that's how I got there. So, so the important thing is to have uh, uh, where you want to go. You have that written down. So if you have a notebook, um, Sylvia already shared that she wants to do 24 transactions. I'm going to encourage you all to write it down and then share it with me. So write down what it is. It can be a dollar figure, a unit goal, and then when you have that down, just share it with me. I'm ready. <laughs> it's Carol. Um, Carol. As you know, I'm brand, brand spanking new to the biz. Um, I was in residential multifamily management senior okay. leadership for many years. Um, and so I'm not sure if my goal, uh, my number goal is, is high or low, so help me out. But okay. I, I would expect as a newbie, probably sell, have eight transactions in the next 12 months. 10 okay. transactions. Eight transactions. All right, fantastic. Uh, who else would like to share? Derek, did you write something down? Yeah, so uh, I have an ambitious goal, but my goal is to close on one to two houses a month. I also have a, a dollar figure in mind. Um, okay. But, you know, just kind of those are my goals right now, is the one to two houses a month. Okay, All right, fantastic. Um, Danielle? Yeah, I'm thinking of like one goal, or sorry, one close. One closing a month, selling one half a month. Okay. All right. And then uh, who else is on? Uh, Emily, I know you're a muscular. By the way, Emily's on the call. Emily is a muscular moving man. I want to give a shout out to her. She's always been doing a lot of classes. They do an amazing job. I actually personally use them myself uh, the last two times that I moved, and they're, they're fantastic. They, they, and, and I'm telling you guys, not only do they do a great job packing, but they are fast. Like, literally moved my entire – uh, I was in a condo and I moved into a house. They moved my whole condo and everything in like two and a half hours. It was crazy. And they did. So they do a crazy, crazy good job. If you haven't had a chance to talk with them, um, they're a great preferred partner. Reach out to Emily. Emily, when you get a chance, put in the chat there your information so people can reach out to you, okay? And then uh, let's see. For uh, sure. Did I get everybody? Anybody? Okay, I think I did. I think everybody's there. Okay, so what I want to do is, uh, if you don't mind, I'm going to just put some stuff on the screen here. Um, and I, I'm going to just use a, um, a figure that I'm familiar with, okay? So, so at the top of your paper, it should look something like this. Um, you're going to put, uh, so I'm going to use 24 deals just because I know the math on this. Uh, 24 deals, but whatever your number is, you're going to write this at the top of your paper. And what we're going to do is we're going to figure out what your unit goal, most of you told me a unit goal. So we're going to figure out what your unit goal looks like um, in dollar figure. And one of the ways that we're going to get there is I'm going to take the average purchase price by the average commission, and I'm going to get an average commission check. Now, one of the most important things you can do for your entire business is to track your business. And remember, you're an independent contractor for my home group. You're not an employee of my home group. 
you are basically hanging your license with my home group to run your business. So you really need to start thinking like a business owner all the time. And business owners, it's important for them to know everything about their business, what's coming in their business, what's going out of their business, uh, everything about the business. So I'm gonna encourage you to track your business. It's very important. I'm gonna share with you why once I get into the, the different pillars of business. But for now, <clears throat> those of you that are brand new, don't worry about not having a history of real estate just yet. But Sylvie, you've, had, you've got 12 years, Carol, you've got some experience. You're gonna be able to go back home in your last 12 months at the very minimum or longer and look at your two year history of what you've been doing in business. So what your average purchase price is, by what your average commission was to get what your average commission check is or, or was, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and start another um, one down here and I'm just gonna take an average purchase price. It's probably a little bit more now, but again, I know the math on this. So I'm gonna use 275,000. It's probably more like the average purchase price I think in Arizona is either 282, somewhere in that range, 282, 285 I think is the average price. But since I know the math on this, I'm gonna take two, 275 uh, times an average commission. I know a lot of us unfortunately are starting to see two and a half percent in there uh, um, on the buy side, um, which is unfortunate. In fact, I saw the other day one at 2%. So that is unfortunate, but we don't always get 3% on our deals as much as we'd love to. So I'll take that by two and a half percent. That equals 68.75 in an average commission check, okay? This is important for you to know because as business owners, you should know what your average sales price is, what your average commission looks like, okay? Um, so if I take this, now, remember I talked about tracking your business. Well, there's two types of costs in this business. You're gonna have what's called a fixed hard cost, okay? I'm gonna write this down. So you're gonna have what's called a fixed hard cost. And then you're gonna have what's called a transactional cost. Okay, these are two types of costs that'll be part of your business, okay? Now, a fixed hard cost is something that's going to be, you're going to have no matter if you close a deal or not, okay? So for example, your $25 a month, if that's what the plan you're on with my home group, um, your, your, your monthly dues, right? So that is, that is a fixed hard cost. You gotta pay it whether you close a deal or not, okay? Uh, if you have a website, like I have a system called Conversion, it's 50 bucks a month, which is my website, IDX, lead gen, it's my database management, I pay 50 bucks a month for that. Does that make sense? So things like that. Now, um, when you're truly tracking your business, I'm gonna encourage you to take it even further than just some of the basics that I'm gonna cover here, but everything that you have. So your rent or, or mortgage, your car payment, um, your real estate dues that you pay every year, your board dues, all that stuff all factors in to all of your expenses. So you should know, you know how much is coming in your business, how much is going out of your business, okay? All the way down to your tax rate. It's great to even know how much, you know, your, what your tax rate is so you can factor in well, all of your true expenses for the year, okay? I'm not gonna get into all of that right now, but that is something you definitely wanna do for your business. Now, transactional costs. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, this is anything that happens per transaction. So if you're on the 299 plan, I'm gonna round it up a dollar just for simple math, but it's $300 per transaction here, right? So that is transactional. It only happens when you close a transaction. If you have a um, TC, a transaction coordinator, you pay them per transaction. Some agents have uh, assistants or admins and they pay them per transaction. So there's different things that will come up per transaction. But for math, I'm just gonna use these, these fees, okay? So uh, right now, if, if I were to subtract this, that would give out my average, if I were to subtract this out, what I make per check would be somewhere in the, uh, about $6,500. Um, now you're gonna factor all your costs in there, okay? You should know exactly every time you close a deal, how much goes out for all of this stuff. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, that will put us right around 6,500.
for an average commission check, okay? Now, if I were to take the 6,500 and times that by my 24 deals, oops, sorry about that. Looks like I have to put a new box. I can't go to the old box. Um, that's gonna be 156,000, okay? All right, does that make sense? No, when you're done figuring out all your expenses, are you truly gonna make 156,000? No, right? Because if your total cost, tax, everything included, was $25,000 for the year, um, you're, you're obviously not gonna make that, right? You're gonna make like 130,000 that year. Does that make sense? But this, this is powerful to know because then you know exactly what's happening in your business. It also allows you to scale Okay, if you want to, because then you'll know, okay, if I go into this, if I go out in the upper range, if I want to double my income, what it takes to do that, okay? So all of you should have written down right now at the top of your paper, the unit goal that you have and what it, baseline figure of what it would be for your gross income, okay? Make sense? Mm -hmm. Everybody okay with that? Any questions so far? Nope. No, I'm going to leave this number up at the top because this is something that should be in the front of your mind every single day. Now, before we get into the different pillars of business, how we're going to get there, there's something that's very important that I want to, I want to cover with you, and that is mindset, okay? Mindset is truly important. And what I mean by that is you need to be committed to hitting this goal that you have. You need to not only just commit to it, and what I mean by committing, you need to commit here. Okay, with your heart, not just your head. All the time we set goals, all the time in our mind. But when we truly achieve things is when we bring the heart and the mind together. And there's nothing you can't accomplish when you do that. Okay, so you truly got to believe with your heart you are going to hit this goal in the next 12 months. Make sense? Mm -hmm. So commitment and consistency are the key to real estate. So you got to be committed and then you got to get consistent. So now that we all have our number here at the top of, the, at the top of your sheet, we're gonna talk about how are we gonna get there, all right? Now, I don't know about you, but when I was a brand new agent, I was a little nervous about um, going out and doing a deal. And I'm sure some of you can, can relate to what I'm talking about. Um, but I, I didn't get anywhere when I did. So the first six months that I was in, I was in, uh, had my real estate license, I thought I had to go to every single class there was. And so I went into, I went to every possible training there was. I was there and I was taking notes and trying to learn things about the business. And uh, my mom, who's 40 years in the business, uh, finally asked me, said, how, how are things going? How are you doing? I'm like, well, I'm learning a lot about the business. She's like, are you making any money? And I'm like, no, because <laughs> unfortunately I'm not making any money right now. She goes, Cause, and she said, that's because you really got to get out there. You got to really start working with people. You have a tremendous amount of support with the brokerage. You need to jump in. You need to start working with people and uh, get out there. So, um, and I did. So I started doing open houses. So, um, and I also started doing a lot of things at once. So I was actually doing six or seven things at once when I first started. So I was doing open houses. I was working my database. I was looking into farming. I was looking at lead generation, door knocking. So I had all these different things that I was doing. And I found that I wasn't getting any one thing accomplished because I had five, six, uh, even more, six or more things that I was trying to do at one time. And it was only when I realized like, wait a minute, I was very successful in loans. Let me take a step back of what I was doing back then uh, when I first got started in the business. Because when I first started doing loans, it was the same thing. I wasn't doing very many in the beginning. I was lucky if I, I had a few clients here and there and I worked my way up to doing 12 to 15 deals a month. And I started, so I looked back and, and I realized that when I was at my best is when I just focused on two or three things at one time. So that's what I'm gonna encourage you to do. It's time to get hyper-focused about what you're gonna do. You have your goal, so now I'm gonna encourage you to pick two, two pillars of business, maybe three. But I started with open houses and database, and that's all I focused on. Lead generation was my third one, and, and, that, and I started a little bit of that, but I really, became the expert at open houses and working my database. And that's when my business really took off. So each one of you needs to think, okay, how am I gonna get there? So what two or three business activities are you gonna do to get there? 
And I want you to take a minute and write that down at the top of your paper. Now, I'm going to give you one that's non-negotiable that you have to do every single day. Anybody want to guess what that is? Work your database. Absolutely. That's exactly right. Database sphere is number one. That is something that you, if you build this correctly, you will call me up or text me or email a year from now, a year and a half from now, and you're going to say, thank you so much for putting that into my head because it is the most important thing that you can build. This is what's going to set the foundation of your real estate career. Okay. So database sphere, that's number one. Now, now that you have that, you should write that down one or two more things that you want to do to get there. So go ahead and write those down. And then if you have it down, if you don't mind sharing with me what it is that you wrote down. And whoever's got it written down can start first. Remind people that you're in real estate. I'm sorry? Remind people that you're in real estate. Okay. That, but I'm looking specifically for like open houses, uh, lead generation, um, you know, database, which we already written down. Um, what pillars of business are you going to do to get there? So that's part of database, which is uh, fantastic. What else have you written down to reach your goal? I wrote down open houses and farming after work database. Okay. Open houses. And what was the other one besides database? Uh, farming. Farming. Okay. So your three would be farming, database, open houses. Thanks for sharing. Anybody else? Mine is database and open houses and then social media is third. Fantastic. Same thing. Carol, what'd you write? Same thing. Open same thing. House. Okay. Sylvie, same thing with you too, or what'd you write? Sorry. Um, I wrote down that I'll probably start farming again. I had done it for a while and then I stopped. Okay. I'll, I'll probably start that up again. So farming, database, and then is that the two that you want to focus on or is there a third? Well, I was thinking about open houses, but I'm not really sure how we're going to be able to do those during the pandemic. So I would like to think of something besides that. Okay, I'll share with you some ideas on the open houses that you can do now. And if that is something you're concerned about, totally understand um, um, on that, okay? And then I'll talk about farming as well. So I'm gonna cover, um, I'll cover open houses. I'm gonna cover database uh, sphere. I'm gonna cover lead generation a little bit. I'm gonna cover farming a little bit, okay? Does that sound good? Cool. All right, now I'm gonna do a lot of talking because for me to type all this stuff down is gonna take us quite a bit of time. And I know we only have another hour and a half to get these four pillars of business in among some other things that I like to cover. So I'm gonna go through it. Just stop me at any time, okay? If you need to, me to repeat something or to write it down. But the first thing I'm gonna go through is I'm gonna go through open houses, okay? And I'm gonna talk a little bit about how to do them in a normal market and how to do them now, okay? Open houses is one of my favorite things to do. Um, <clears throat> we average over 1,500 listings here at my home group, so there's no shortage of finding open houses. Now, I prefer to do vacant properties only unless it's my listing. <clears throat> Excuse me. If it's my listing, then I'll, I'll, as long as my seller will allow me to do as many open houses as I can, I will. Um, right now I'm talking about normal market, okay? And then I'm gonna get into COVID and all that stuff in just a second. But, but in a normal market, I would sit as many open houses as I could. I did eight open houses a month when I started. So two every single weekend, every Saturday and Sunday were my favorite days to do them. Any day of the week works though. So as long as, you know, really it's all about building relationships. So it does not matter what day of the week that you do the open house, okay? And if open houses is one of your pillar business and you are going to do them, then I would try to do as many as, as you can, as many as you feel comfortable doing. So here's how I do them. Um, basically, I will go into company listings. So when I'm in the MLS, I will click the menu button. When I'm in the MLS, I'll go to company listings. And when I do that, that'll show me every listing within the company, not just the, the listings that are the branch that I'm under. So go to company listings. Once you're in there, um, I do three things. So I pick my price point, I pick my area, okay? And vacant, those are the first three things that I'm gonna choose. 
So my price point is usually between 225,000 and 400,000 is my price point. That's my sweet spot. And the reason is because that is where most of the traffic is from. That's where most houses are being sold. Looks like there was a, uh, a chat. So you forgot to mention referrals, no problem. Okay, referrals that all fall in line with the database. So thanks for posting that. Um, so, so I'm gonna to go to my price points. So I'm gonna go down, scroll down to 225,000, and then I'm gonna start looking for my area. Now your area can be, uh, if you're doing Mesa, Gilbert, Chandler, Scottsdale, it can, you know, you, you get where I'm going with that. You can even do it by zip code if you want to, but uh, just pick your area. So I'm from the East Valley, so I do a lot of open houses out in the East Valley. So I'll go down to 225,000, then I'm gonna start scrolling down until I find uh, Mesa. And then, if I, and then if I find one, I'm gonna click on it, and then it'll open up, so the MLS will open up, and then I'll have my MLS sheet there. I'll scroll to the bottom there, and I'll look for it to be vacant. That's my next thing. So I found my price point, my area, and then I'm looking for if it's vacant or not. If it's vacant, there's a little checkbox in the upper left. You can check mark that box, and then I'm gonna find up to three to five potential vacant properties that I want to do my open house at, okay? So you can just check mark those boxes till we have five of them. Once I have five, you're gonna click the view selected and all five of those properties are gonna come up, okay? And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rank these five properties. And the reason I rank them is because I'm always looking to maximize the amount of traffic that come into an open house. So, and here's how I, here I rank them. I rank them by days on market, okay? I rank them by the map, which means by the location. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to try to draw here and I'm gonna draw a quick what I mean by the map. So if I have this, if I have this here, and I have, uh, I'm gonna to try to build a cross street here. This isn't gonna be the best drawing you guys, but it'll get, it'll get the point across. So if I have a house, if I have a house right here and it's two turns and I have a house right here and it's one, two, three, four, five, six turns, which one are you gonna rank higher? The two turns, right? Because it's less open house signs to it. Not that I wouldn't do the one that is six turns I'm just gonna rank this one higher because I can maximize my sign usage. So I'm gonna leave this up for a second so that I can, I can show that. But um, so I rank it by the map, I rank it by the days on market, okay? And I've, and I've got my area, right? So um, now, I'm gonna give you a couple tips. So as you open it up, you see that it's vacant. I'm gonna see how many days on market it is and I'm gonna look at the map to see where the location is, okay? Uh, and if it's if it's the two turns, I rank them in order, right? Now, here's a secret. I'm gonna give you a little tip. If if you like the location, okay, and you like where the house is, all that stuff, and you see days on market says 90 days on market, I'm gonna encourage you to click the history tab. And the reason I'm gonna ask you to do this is because if you click the history tab, it's gonna show you all the activity on that listing. It's also gonna show you if it's been an open house on it or not. And so if, it, if I open it up and I see that there's been no open houses on it, I'll treat it like day one on the market. Now, in COVID, during times of COVID, there's probably not been a lot of open houses on it. So you're going to find a lot of them that have it on there. And during COVID, you're going to have to get permission to be able to do the house anyway. But since it's vacant, it might, you're probably going to get a, a, a more yeses than noes just because it is vacant. And they're probably going to have you take precautions on cleaning the house, things like that. We'll get into that in just a minute. But in a normal market, that's what you're looking for, right? And so I rank them in order, by days on market, by the location, all that stuff. Once I have them ranked in order, I'm gonna call the agent, my favorite to my least favorite, and I'm gonna call the agent and ask for permission to do the open house, okay? And if they say yes, great. If they say no, I move on to the next one. So we have another, uh, Yeah, okay, so we got that there. So I um, just wanna make sure I saw the chat thing went there. Um, 
Any questions so far? We good? I can only see two of you. So um, if everything's good, I'm gonna keep going. So, so now that we've called the agent and they said yes um, to, to doing the open house, um, now we're gonna start preparing. So one of, them, one of the ways we're gonna prepare, if you remember, I, I, I have this drawn here, is where to put your open house signs. And I always like to print out the map, get a print of the intersection that I'm at so that I can really decide where I'm gonna put the open house signs. Now, how many signs do you wanna bring? As many as, as you can uh, get. So I know here you can check out 10 open house signs for, for, 10, for a $25 deposit. You can check out open house signs. Um, I like to have 20 signs. So if you don't have any now, that does get a little expensive. There are gonna be some one-time expenses during your real estate career. You know, um, open house signs will be one of them. Work your way up to 20 signs. I had to borrow 80 bucks just to get 10. I started with 10 open house signs and they were generic. I got them from a realty sign company. They were orange and black and they just had open house on them and I started with that. Um, but eventually you're gonna to wanna to have at least 20 signs. 20 signs that go like this. Let me see if I can, if, that go like this. And then you're gonna want uh, five signs. And I don't know if they have it here, but it, um, it doesn't look like they're gonna have it. But basically you're gonna want five signs that go like this, straight up and down, okay? So 20 signs to go like this, and then 20 signs to go straight up and down. Work your way up to that. I did not start with that. I had to work my way up to that, all right? And the reason is when you draw the map, and oh, by the way, every city has a different uh, rules about how many signs you can have out. So you can go to the city website and check it out. I believe Open House Helpers, if you join their Facebook group, they have that information in there as well. Um, but, um, you need to find out because I know Scottsdale has some restrictions in areas. Chandler, I know they were in litigation on this. I don't know if that's been resolved or not, uh, but they had restrictions on signs. So make sure you check the city website for how many signs you can put out. Now, if you're in an area like where I live, you can put out as many open house signs as you want. I'm going to look at the intersection. So if this is the house that, that I'm doing right here, hopefully I didn't know if I draw that star that great, but, uh, Oh, well, it is a star. Believe it or not, that's a star. Um, if this is the house that I'm doing, then I'm going to uh, look where I'm gonna put the signs. Now, I usually cover the two main intersections closest to the house, okay? So if these are the main intersections here, I'm gonna put a sign here. I'm gonna put a, what I'm gonna do is my signs are gonna be 10 to 15 yards apart. This is why I have, this is assuming I have 20 signs, okay? Or you have 20 signs. I'm gonna put some signs here. And then I'm gonna have them over here too. 10 to 15 yards apart. Don't put them too close together or they can't see them, right? And then for traffic that's coming this way, I'm gonna have some signs here. Okay, of course I'm gonna have one here and the one to the property. I'm gonna put a couple out here in the middle on the other side to, to tell them to turn into this section here, okay? All right, now, um, so far I have three, six, nine, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 of my signs and my 20 signs are now used here, okay? Now let's say the distance between here and here is a, is a great distance then I'm probably gonna have a straight up and down sign to say, keep going here, okay? So I've used one of my five signs, 16 of my other signs. Now, if, since I have some left over, this is an area I can maximize traffic. Let's just say there's a road that comes in here and then connects to this road right here. Well, if that's the case, I might put two more signs over here, straight up and down sign here, and then another sign here to turn to get to the house. So now I've used 19 of my 20 signs and two of my five signs. So you can see why printing out the map can be a great way to not only know where you're gonna put the signs, but how to maximize the sign usage to get the traffic to the home. Make sense? Everybody good with that? 
Okay, cool. Um, so that's what I do for the signs there. So now, that's if I, for signs. Now, what else am I gonna bring to an open house? Well, I'm gonna bring in, of course, the sign-in sheet. Um, I used to just use the title sign-in sheet, but I have a, a what I call a feedback form, which is my sign-in sheet. I can give you a copy of that. If each of you will just email me at michaelmarlow at myhomegroup.com, I will give you a copy of the sheet that I use. So I will bring I will bring that in. So I, I guess you know what I'm gonna do? So I'm gonna just, um, so I have 20 signs, right? I also, then I'm gonna bring in my, my feedback form. Slash sign in sheet. Uh, remember, the house is vacant, so I, I bring in two chairs. Even though if it's just me doing it, I bring two chairs and I bring at least two folding tables. I didn't start with this. I started with a camping chair and flyers, but I worked my way up to doing this. So two folding tables. Probably two by four. You don't need anything tremendously big. And I think I got them at um, um, Walmart for like 10 bucks or 12 bucks or something like that. Um, um, you're going to bring two types of flyers. The first one is going to be a custom flyer. And then the second one's gonna be the MLS sheet client version, okay? The reason I bring the client version, because believe it or not, when people come from the open house, there's some people that specifically wanna live in that area. And um, in the MLS client sheet, it'll give you the HOA information, it'll give you the community uh, features, things like that. So that's why I always bring the client version with me. I don't hand that out a lot. I, I hand out more of the custom flyer than I do anything. But I do have them there for people that are very, very interested in that neighborhood. I'll give them one of those too. Um, um, I will always have, by the way, the MLS um, private version of that open house, okay, um, of that house that I'm sitting open just so I can see any private remarks, any special information I should know. I'll have a, that one's for myself, okay. I don't share that with anybody. That's just for me and information about the property. Okay, so I got my feedback form, my sign-in sheet, I got my two chairs, I got my folding tables. I'm gonna put a bunch of stuff on the folding tables. Here's what I put on there. I'll put buyer guides, seller guides. These are all things that I'll have on there. I'm gonna have what's called an Altos report. This is actually very important. The Altos report will give you a snapshot of what's happening in that zip code, okay? how fast homes are selling, what they're selling for, all that good information. You can get these, both of these from your title company. Um, they can give these to you, buyer guides and seller guides, along with the Altos report. I'll have that there. Um, I also am going to have, um, I, I'll bring water, um, water bottles for, for people to have. You can bring food if you want to. I'm gonna put that up there. I know some people do. It's up to you if you wanna do that or not. I, at the very least, will bring water. Um, I'm also going to bring what's called a listing book. This is something that I create through RPR. You can get it through the title company as well. A uh, listing book, I do not hand these out. This is just for the property itself. And RPR, it's called a, a property detail report. You can print it out. What I like about RPR, how many of you are familiar with RPR? If you're not, it's called Realtor Property Resource. It's free. It comes with your subscription to Armless. Um, you'll want to get that. We're starting to have RPR classes here at my home group. But it's a great way to create flyers, create this property detail report. I started creating my own listing books through RPR. I used to get them through the title company. They'll know what you're talking about. But the listing book is basically, you know, comps of, of homes in the area. It's got the demographics. It's got details. It has a lot of great information in there. I typically will put that in the kitchen. It's just another talking point at my open house. But I do not hand it out. It's just there for people to look at. Um, and then um, I will have uh, mortgage, mortgage flyers. So their business cards. So whoever your lender is, I'll have their business cards and flyers. About programs, right? For example, I used to use the Home and Five flyer a lot. 
Uh, I think that program is back, but I used to use that a lot because a lot of the properties that I were doing were 250,000 to 270,000. Uh, and, and Home and Five was a great product. It's a great program. And it, it uh, almost little to no money down through the program, that, especially if you get the seller to pay uh, the closing costs, uh, they can get into a home for, for very little money. Uh, great program, but I would have at least a few programs from my lender that were there. Um, great to have that information. I'll give you an example. I was training an agent at an open house. She did a great job on giving them a tour. I'll talk about that in a second, but um, she was, you know, giving them a showing of the home. And at the very end, you could tell she connected with the clients. She showed the best part of the property last. And then she had mentioned, so I really enjoyed uh, uh, talking with you. I'd love to help you with your, with your, your, they were buying a home. I'd love to help you through the home process. They were like, yeah, we really like you too. We'd like to work with you. She was great. Um, when are you looking to buy? They said the next three months because they were saving money for a down payment. She said, fantastic. I'm going to give you my card. I'll keep in touch with you when you're ready. I'd love to work with you. And knowing she did not know about the home in five. So I said, well, actually, have you guys heard of the home in five? And they're like, no, what's that program? And so I went through the basics of the program, encouraged them to talk with their lender about the program. And they went from a three month buyer to a now buyer because they love the idea about the home, about the home in five and all the money that they were saving, they could use for moving in furniture, things like that. So um, just that's why it's important to know the different lending programs that are out there so that you can, um, um, that can help you in cases like this. So that's just another example of why you'd want to have that, okay? Um, so have those out there. I'll put those out on the table as well. Um, but you're, of course, going to want your business cards and information out there as well. So you want to have your business cards ready to hand out as well. Um, I also uh, bring a speaker, um, and, I, and I'll put, um, you know, just something for ambience. I'll, I'll put on something uh, low. Uh, music playing there so i'll have i'll have that there as well um you got the water you got the water food the altos report you got the listing book you got your business your business cards uh your flyers on the property which we have the custom flyer i'm going to go back to that just for a second um, you're going to have the price of the property on there the description of the property on there okay um and then uh, some pictures of of uh, on there as well uh, but more importantly on the custom flyer you're going to want three things at the bottom um, those of you that don't, we all of you have your database, right? So hopefully you have a system that will have automatic trip campaigns and things like that. If you don't, you're going to want to work to get something like that. And I'll cover that more in the database section. Uh, but right now, I have an all-in-one system. It's my website IDX feed. It's a lead generation and database management all-in-one. Now, at the bottom of my flyer, I put three things on there. And I'll put my website so that they can search for properties on there. Okay, um, um, which is my mobile app, which is what I put on there. And then I put a free, find out what your home's worth on there. Okay, and then my website. So I have those three things. Now, this is my talking, my last talking point that I have on the way out of the home. I give them the flyer on the way in, so it gives them information about the home. Hopefully I'm giving them a tour. If not, all that information's on that flyer. But more importantly at the bottom are those three things. And that's my last talking point. And I'll share with you exactly how I'll give you my script for that um, here in a moment. But um, so I just want to go back to that for a second. So you have your signs that you have set up on, uh, out there. You've got your chairs, your folding tables, which you can have your buyer guides, your seller guides, your altos report. I also have three to five other properties that are for sale in the neighborhood. in the neighborhood. Okay, so I'll have that. Now, um, this is important because uh, I'm willing to bet probably eight out of 10 times or even nine out of 10 times that they're not, they're not gonna be interested in, in the house that they're looking at, okay? Uh, but uh, this is a relationship-based business. So I like to have other properties that are for sale in the neighborhood and I'll put them up on the wall. Now, if you're going to do it on the wall, like I've done in the past, make sure you're not using duct tape or something like that. Use some non-stick stuff that's not going to hurt the paint. So you're going to have to paint the house after you leave. Um, but you can also put it on an easel, put it on the wall. I put them on the kitchen counter when I, when I first started. That's where I started with them. Um, but it didn't get as much traction as if I put them up on the wall. 
people are curious by nature. So when I set up my open house, I have the two folding tables. I'll put one of them against the wall with the buyer guides, seller guides, and information on there. The other folding table, I like to use it as my desk. So that's where I'll have my laptop. I'll have my business cards. I'll have some more information, maybe the mortgage information flyers on my, on my desk as well. And then in the kitchen, I'll have the listing book. On the wall, I'll have three to five other properties for sale. And, and that's kind of been my secret is try to create three to five what's this. You know, so people are always, what is this? And what's all this stuff over here on the table? So and even if they don't actually say the words, if they walk up to the table and they're looking at all the information on there, you need to realize that's an opp opportunity for you to talk to them, to explain what all that information is on the table, okay? So create opportunity in the open house. You want to stay engaged from the time they walk in till the time they leave, okay? So create opportunities that way. So, um, and you can get creative on how you do that. Everyone has different ways that they do that, um, but these are some of the things that I do, okay? Now, let's talk about safety. So safety is uh, of the most importance. So you should be um, uh, letting the neighbor on the left, the neighbor on the right know that you're having an open house so they can keep an eye out for things. You should also let family and friends, if you're doing an open house by yourself, know where you are, what time you're doing the open house, all of that. Um, all the doors should be unlocked. You should know every exit of the home. Um, so you, if, you, if you had to, you could, leave, you could get out quickly. You should not bring in your purse. Uh, for, for women, don't bring in your purse. Uh, put that locked in your trunk. Just have your keys and your phone on you, and you should have them on you so that uh, if you needed to, you'd be able to get out. So safety, safety, safety. Um, I prefer to do open houses with another agent anyway, uh, just because um, I'll tell you why. One of my best friends, uh, um, Jacqueline, she she's a licensed agent. She's also a mortgage licensed in mortgage, but her and I did so many open houses together. And what was great about it was we could always tell uh, who they were gravitating to, and so the, the other would take the lead. And that, and that's very, I think it's very powerful because 50% of something's better than nothing, right? And so sometimes that's exactly what happens and they just tend to gravitate towards the other person. Now, if the other person wasn't there, they might not have been a client with you because you're not going to gel with everyone. Just, that's just the way it is. But hopefully you're going to get, you know, maximize uh, of that time and meet clients and work with them, all that good stuff. But um, always good to have a partner in there at open houses for and the other reason is safety as well. So if there's two of you there, there's a lot less uh, uh, that may happen with, with two people in the open house. So. Um, know your front and exits, all that stuff. Just make sure you lock everything back up uh, when you leave. Um, uh, so let's see here. I know I'm talking fast because we only have two hours and we're already approaching in an hour and I want to make sure I get everything in. So set up the open house up. Um, so other things that I like to do is with that same custom flyer that you have, I like to door knock the neighborhood the day before or, or earlier that day before you have the open house. And the reason I like to do that is invite all the neighbors to the open house. There's two ways to do this. You can invite them during the time you have the open house, or you can do an exclusive one hour before. So if your open house is one to three, you might do it from 12 to one, invite all the neighbors for their own exclusive view of the home for that hour. And you can let them know that. Now I take that custom flyer, I'll go knock 50 doors closest to that house, and I will invite everybody to that. The reason this is powerful is because you remember that flyer that I talked about? Uh, the bottom is the website, the mobile app, and find out what your home's worth. Well, for that seller, when they realize, oh, wow, that house is listed for $325,000, well, right there on that flyer, it says find out what your home's worth. They might want to see what their home's worth. And when they do that, at least my system, when they log in to do that free home evaluation, it lets me know that they logged in the system, captures their information, and that becomes a lead for me. Okay. So, and you may get a potential lead from the client just inviting them to the open house, okay? So I invite a few people. Uh, Johnny Walker, who's amazing at open houses too, if you get a chance to catch his class, you'll love that. Um, he actually will do the door knocking after the open house. And so what he'll do is, remember I told you about tracking your business. I'm gonna talk about tracking your open houses. Well, that's what he does. He'll say, hey, I had 16 people come through today. Uh, five were actually interested in this neighborhood. And so if, you, if you're thinking of buying and selling, please let me know because I have five people right now that are interested in this neighborhood. Does that make sense? So he'll go out and share that information after the open house. So if you get a chance, catch his class when he does it as well.
Wait, so, so you said people were door knocking the night before and then after as well, after the open house? You could do before and after if you like. Okay. Um, that's a great, uh, um, you know, one-two punch there if you want to do that. So uh, I would encourage both. And it's a lot of time. I, I get that. But in growing your business, it, it's going to, I truly believe it helps. So, um, okay. yeah, thanks, thanks for that question. So, so why do I do go through so much effort to put all of this stuff in there? I got the signs. I got 20 signs out there. I've got, I've got my flyers all through the house. I've got my listing book there. I got my buyer guide, seller guides. I got mortgage flyers all over. I got the three to five properties for sale in the house. Why do I do that? Why do I go through so much in my open house? Well, the reason is, is because when those neighbors come through and all those people come through, a lot of times people have a house to sell before they buy, right? And so you're, you're almost on an audition when you're at an open house. So when those those neighbors come through or other people that potentially have a house to sell, they're going to look at and see all the stuff that I do to sell a house. Right. So, see what I'm saying? So, and hopefully they're going to say, wow, and when I list my house, I want, this, I want this person to sell my house because look at everything they do. They put out tons of signs. They have tons of information. They know everything that's going on in the market in that area. And they, they really go all out to sell a house. That's why I do all that stuff. Okay. Um, any questions so far? No. A lot of it you're probably very familiar with. Uh, those of you that are new, I do encourage you to work your way up to this. Again, when I started, I just had a flyer and I had a camping chair. And when they came through the door, I almost tackled them because I was so hungry for business. I didn't want them to leave, you know. Um, so um, start out, if that's all you can do now, just start, start out with uh, a chair and flyers and, and just uh, some important things uh, um, about, it is, about an open house as well. Be positive. Do not walk into the house with negative energy. If you're having a bad day, you need to check it at the door. They're going to read. They're going to read that. They're going to feel it. Um, be in a good mood. Uh, be in the right mindset. Be ready to provide information. Do not sell. This is not. Uh, for those of you who think that this is a sales business, it's not. This is a relationship-based business. There are transactions. Yes, they do happen. But this is all about building a relationship with the client. And the best thing you can do is be the provider of information. So um, if you listen, 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 ask the right questions, you're going to be able to provide them with the, be the, the right information to help them make the best decision they can, okay? And whether it's selling a house or buying a house, okay? So be in a good mood. Be cordial. Be genuine. Be you. There isn't, you don't have to be too scripted. Just be yourself. People like it when you're genuine. They're going to know when you're genuine. So be you, okay? So now we have everything set up, and this is kind of how I how I mean, how I kind of set up the open house. So I always have my tip, my folding table as my desk. I'll have that position so that I can see the front door. Hopefully, there's a window I can see out the window, and I can see when cars pull up. I am never sitting when I'm when I see someone pull up to the curb. Okay, if there's someone coming in or pull up to the curb, I am standing. I'm never sitting. Okay, um, and. When they do come to the door, I will greet them at the door, okay? If the weather is beautiful, it's hot out now. So when it's hot out now, I'll have a sign on the door that will say, you know, no need to knock, walk right in. I want them to walk in. Uh, but when it's beautiful out, I'll have the door wide open. So when I don't need the air on and it's nice out, I have the door wide open for them to come in, okay? Um, but when it's hot, I have the sign on the door, please come in. Um, uh, I greet them at the door. Now, when I greet them at the door, my mental note machine turns on. I am constantly taking notes on everything that they say, everything they do, even what they're wearing makes a difference. I'll give you an example. Um, I am a Chicago Bears fan. So I'm not afraid to admit that I'm a Bears fan. I will be for life. Um, uh, a gentleman had walked up to the door. He had a Green Bay Packer shirt on. So some of you might start laughing now because you know how that's going to go. And I basically said, you can't come in. And he was stunned for a second. He's like, well, wait a minute. What, what do you mean I can't come in? And I just kind of looked at him. He's like, oh, you're a Bears fan because he had a Green Bay Packer shirt on. And of course, that broke the ice. We started laughing. And, of course, I, we, started, we got along uh, great after that. So um, there are things that I pay attention to. So pay attention, all right? Um, and I write everything down. So you can bet when he went into my database system that I put Green Bay fan, okay? 
And so it made the conversation with my father that much better. Um, um, so take mental notes, write it all down after they leave, and then you're going to put that into the database system if they go into your system. Not everyone's going to go into your system, but go ahead and take notes anyway. Because I follow up with everyone that gives me information. I follow up with them after the open house. And how much better of a conversation it is if you have some talking points to, you know, to talk with them about, right? And not just say, hey, thanks for coming to open house. When do you think you're ready to buy or sell? That's not how you want to do that. Make it personal. You know, you want to know about these people. If they have kids, how many kids were with them? If they were on the way to the soccer game, um, you want to make all these notes. It works out great. I had a couple come in with a couple kids. They were, they were coming on, the, on their way to the soccer game. The soccer game was in a little while, but they wanted to stop in on their, on their way. So they did. And uh, when I followed up with them, the very first thing I asked was, how did the kids do in the soccer game? Hi, it's Michael from the open house. Thanks for coming in. Just want to see how you're doing. How did it go with the game? How did the kids do? So I, I made it more personal, personal. Of course, then I did get into thanking them for coming into the open house. Um, I'll talk a little bit about follow up, but that's a whole other class. Okay. I have a 30 day follow up campaign that I do uh, for people that come through open houses. I hit them hard for 30 days. After that, they're on my drip campaign. Okay. So that's another class and I'll do that another time. I'll set that up with Kelly and we can get, we can dive into that. I don't have enough time today for that. But, um, so I greet them at the door. Mental note machine is on. Um, and I will, um, say hello. Thanks for coming to the open house. And uh, then they'll say, oh, yeah, we're just coming to take a look. And then I'll invite them on a tour at that point. And whether they say yes or no, it doesn't matter. But notice, remember when I first uh, talked about my open houses, I would literally almost tack them at the door with the flyer. I don't bring anything in my hand at the door. I'm not bringing a flyer with me. I am going to greet them. It's just hello. Once they say yes or no to the tour, it does not matter. I will go back. I will get the feedback form, excuse me, the feedback form, and I will get that custom flyer. Okay. Now I put my feedback form on a clipboard with a pen because for some reason, when I hand them a clipboard, they almost always fill it out. Not all the time, but I get more people to fill it out when I give them a clipboard than when I don't. Okay. So I give them a clipboard with a pen with a feedback form on it and a custom flyer. And my script is simple. Um, and here's some information about the home. And by the way, we're trying to provide as much feedback to the sellers we can on the home. We would love your opinion. And I hand them the clipboard with, with, a, with a feedback form. Now on the feedback form is going to have qualifying questions. Are you a buyer or seller? When are you looking to buy the next three months, six months, 12 months? It has that information on their name, phone number, email, all that stuff. And then on the other half of it is what did you like best about the home? And it's easy stuff. They can circle one through 10, what would they like, what they didn't like, stuff like that. So that is one way I seem to capture a lot of, a lot of uh, information by, by handing out the feedback form. Now, if they say they want to go on a tour, this is important for safety reasons, I do not lead them into every room, okay? I will show them down the hallway, I will show them into the bedrooms, um, they will go in first, I will stand at the hallway at the door. Um, I didn't always do that, I used to just walk right in before them and bite them all in, all that stuff. But in these days, be safe. Um, invite them down the hallway, let them walk into the, to the master bedroom. We're going to get to COVID in a second, um, how we do that now, but um, let them go in uh, and be in the hallway, be there, look for cues, look for things that, that, that if they have questions, body language says a lot, pay attention to the cues. I had a guy standing in, in the main room one time, he, looked, he was doing this and then he was doing this and he was looking around. The two other, I was training two agents at that time and I was telling them, you need to go talk to him because he actually had a question. They weren't sure, so I walked up and I said, this is kind of a different room, right? It's not a long room. He's like, yeah, what would you do with this room? And then I just started to paint a picture. Are you an entertainer? Uh, do you like to entertain? He was like, yeah. I'm like, well, you can have a, a bar with some stools right here. You can have a wine fridge right here. You can have your sofa right there with your big screen TV. I just started painting a picture. And they were people that didn't want to tour. And then now they changed their mind and said, you know what? We'd like to tour. Um, so things like that. And in fact, in the very end, um, they actually asked if I would be their realtor because of just how genuine I was, how friendly I was, all that stuff. So, no. Um, so you go on the tour, be safe, let them go in the rooms, go out. Remember the flyer? So now the tour is over. They're leaving the open house. That custom flyer, I always remind them. It's my last talking point on the way out. 
And um, I would say, by the way, whether they're working with their realtor or not, I will say this script. By the way, at the bottom of that, it's a no hassle way to search for properties. You can go onto my website, not gonna bother you, not gonna drip on you, but you can go in there and, and search for properties if you like. If you, have, if you have any questions, let me know, or you can go, if they have a realtor, just call your realtor with any questions that you have. And, um, and, and but it just makes them look at the bottom because remember the free home evaluation kit, if they have a home that they have to sell, they don't always tell you they have a home to sell, but they might go home, check out the free home evaluation and that becomes a lead for me, okay? So I remind them of that. After they leave the open house, if I don't have somebody else coming in right away, I will, I will take that feedback form that they filled out for me and I will make as many notes on that as I can. If they wanted me to provide them information, they're gonna go into my database with all of that information, okay? Any questions so far? No, I'm doing okay. Hopefully you're all taking good notes on that. Now let's talk about COVID. So the days of COVID, uh, it gets a little bit different on doing open houses. I still encourage you to do them. There's a way to do them. Remember, I choose vacant only. Um, so in COVID, you can do what's called a virtual open house. So basically you're gonna be pretty much the only one in the open house that you're gonna be there. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna do everything the same way. You're gonna prepare for it the same way. So, oh, by the way, um, I'm, gonna get in, uh, I'm gonna get into that right after that, how I prepare for it, because I realized I didn't cover that. But So for COVID, what, what you're gonna do is you're gonna preview the open house. You're gonna go online, you're gonna see that's vacant, you're gonna look through the pictures, and you can say, okay, this is gonna be a good one. You're gonna get permission to do the open house. But then what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to the open house, you're gonna preview it before you actually do the open house, and you're gonna do your own video tour of the open house, okay? So you're gonna create a video and you can do it as a selfie type video if you want. Hey, check out the kitchen. Then you're gonna go through the kitchen. You're gonna go through the whole house, backyard, front yard, and you're gonna do your own video tour of the open house, okay? And then what you're gonna do is you can set up the signs like, like you've done. You're gonna market it, which I'll talk about marketing in here in a second. And then in the front yard, you're gonna put a sign that says text, text, for virtual tour of the open house, okay, on the sign in the front yard. So they literally can text um, their number to the number you give them for the virtual tour. And when they do that, you're then gonna send them that video so they literally in their car can watch the tour of the open house. And then you can also put on that sign to set an appointment so they can actually set an appointment for an open house with you. You can put that on the sign as well, text for appointment for the open house. So if they get the virtual tour, which is pretty cool because now you're walking around and showing them everything about the open house and they can set an appointment with you or their realtor to come and view it, okay? So that's one way to do the virtual open house. Now, if they do set an appointment with you to come see the open house, you're going to have a mask, gloves, cleaner, all that stuff available so that you can make sure that everything gets clean. You're going to clean it before and then you'll clean it after you leave. But here's what a lot of agents do is they'll have their own gloves on, their own mask. So when someone comes in and sets the appointment and, they, and you're going to show them the open house, um, Johnny Walker does this, uh, but you encourage them to say, hey, um, I have gloves and a mask on and they have a mask on and say, if, if it's okay, I'll open any doors that you want to look in and you'll open it up for them. So they don't have to touch anything, but you have the gloves on to do that. And of course, when it's over, you'll throw your gloves away, put your next pair on, that kind of thing, and you can do that appointment-wise. Does that make sense? So there is a way to do it in COVID. You're just gonna be precautious, be careful. You're gonna require them to wear a mask when they come in for the appointment. You're gonna be wearing a mask and gloves. And uh, again, then you can open things up for them so they can look at things that they need to, uh, and then you can do it that way. But you're going to be very cautious, of course, social distance when you're doing that. Um, you know, keep it, keep a, you know, a safe distance between you and them. But you're able to be able to do the open house that way. Uh, any other questions on that? Does that answer, Sylvia, uh, for COVID? Did that answer your question, Sylvia? Yes, I was just wondering how I was going to do that. That actually sounds pretty good. Yeah, yeah, I love the virtual experience. It's not easy. For your open houses. Yeah, there are people that have done the virtual ones. Um, it's not easy because it is a little extra work and you do got to create the sign in the yard so they can get the virtual tour. Um, but it does work. Uh, and, and even in this environment, you guys, 
if you're having open house and you're wearing a mask, you're at the open house and people are coming in, you know, you got to think that they're probably more serious buyers, right? If they're actually out going into open houses during this time. So, um, you know, if you're going to do them, just be safe, be precautious, have the gloves, have the mask, um, have that stuff, cleaning stuff available to clean things out after people leave. So when other people come in, so just be cautious, be safe if you're going to do them that way. Now quickly in the marketing, this is how I market the open house. Every Monday or Tuesday is when I plan my open house. So that's when I'll go find the open house, schedule the open house. And then what I do is five days before, three days before, one day before, I'm gonna market it on Facebook. I'm gonna let the Facebook world know that I'm having an open house. And what I do is I join at least as many open house, 40 groups, but I join as many open house groups as I can around the valley. And so I'm gonna let them know that I'm having an open house, okay? If you're going to do the virtual tour, do not post the whole virtual tour uh, on Open House. Otherwise, they, they, they may not want to set an appointment with you. Uh, you can, but I would do a version of the virtual tour, and then I would ask them to text you for the full virtual tour. Okay, That way you can try to capture their information. Does that make sense? If you give it to them all in that Facebook group, they may never contact you. I would at least try to do a, a, a version of it. A couple of exciting things about the property and say please text me or dm me for for the full virtual tour so you can try to capture their information okay so five days before three days before one day before you're going to go out there and let everybody know through social media that you're having an open house you can do instagram you can do facebook all the different platforms to let the world know you're having an open house okay and then the day before i will knock 50 doors to invite everybody to the open house then with my signs that's what i do for marketing okay um any questions no. so I'm gonna get into all right all right i'm going to get into um i'm going to get into tracking your business open houses you guys remember i told you write everything went down but you're also going to write how many people came through your open house how many people you talked to at the open, that came through your open house how many people are interested in going into your database system you're going to track it and the reason is is you're eventually, after you do in a few months of this, you're gonna know how many people per month have gone through your open houses, how many people you talk to, how many people you're working with. You see where I'm going with this, right? Eventually, you're gonna be able to say, for every 34 people I talk to in an open house, I have an opportunity to close a transaction. And that's what you wanna to get to, because it's very motivating when you have those numbers. And you're gonna get it down to, in the fact, you're gonna say, for every time I, and I got it to a point where when I did eight open houses a month, I was doing a deal a month. Back to Zoom was two deals a month. So you're going to start tracking it so that you know how many open houses to a deal, how many conversations to a deal, so on and so forth. And that's going to make it much easier to hit your goal. Because when you know, you know, all you got to do is talk to 34 people and have an opportunity, that's, it's, it's just powerful. Okay. So track your business. Okay. Now, any questions on open houses before I move into the next thing? No, we're good? Okay. If you have other questions, you can reach me after. No worries. You have my email address. Just shoot me an email. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to get into lead generation. I'm going to close the database, and I'm going to talk about farming a little bit too. So um, lead generation. Now, how many of you have a lead generation system, like Conversion, Boomtown, Commissions, Inc., things like that? How many of you have one? I'm gonna go with the silence that nobody has one. Okay, if lead generation is gonna be a tool, you're gonna to need a system that's gonna be able to track it. Now, when I first started, I just used an Excel spreadsheet and I used my notebook, but that got so complicated by trying to track everything that we're talking about here that I eventually had to get a system. So when I started closing deals, I started, I used Joe Stump's referral tracking system and then I used Market Leader, which even then it wasn't the best thing for me. And I ended up going into conversion and then I've used other systems. I've used many systems on it. But you're basically gonna need a system that has drip campaigns. So the best system is the one you use but depending on your business. So if lead generation is a tool, you're gonna to want something like Conversion, Commissions Inc., Boomtown, Firepoint, Real Geeks. There's a lot of them out there. Here at the company, we have Conversion. Conversion is $50 a month with us, and it's everything, it has everything you need in there. Boomtown is $65 a month, and then there's a lot of other great systems out there. You're gonna find one that fits your budget and then get good at it. But pick one and start getting good at it if you want uh to use conversion 
I'm the one that'll set you up for conversion. So you'll just need your MLS ID, your email address, your picture, your phone number that you want to be contacted at. Email it over to me and I can get you set up for conversion if that's something you're interested in. Um, but you're going to need an all-in-one system if you're going to be doing lead generation, okay? Something that you can post ads on social media platforms, drive traffic back to your website to convert to leads. Um, you're going to need an all-in-one system, okay? It's, it's just easier if you do that. You can do it without it. It's just a little bit harder. Uh, but these systems have click of a button and you can post out the social media versus you have to go to get the picture, put it out there, put the content, post it out there. And then when you do get a lead, capturing it, putting it into your system, whereas an all-in-one system, it'll do it for you, okay? So um, if you have more questions on this, please just reach out to me. I can go through some different CRMs and things like that. We can talk about that offline don't have enough time today. But the most important thing about lead generation is gonna be consistency. This is something, if you're gonna do it, you can't do it one day and then wait three days and do it again. You gotta do it every single day, okay? This is marketing and branding in itself. You have to be out there. People have to get familiar with you. You gotta post every single day. Okay, and uh, I know right now they have a limit. They didn't used to. We used to be able to post 40 times a day. Now I think it's like up down to 10. You can like do 10 posts a day before they start to uh, um, block you. Um, so Facebook has all the algorithms. Um, you copying and pasting and sharing and things like that. Don't do that anymore. Everything needs to be raw, organic. So you're gonna have to create your 10 posts yourself, uh, but it does get easy. So and when I first started, it took me a little while. But now I can post a, I can do a post in less than a minute. Okay, so it'll take you maybe 20, 30 minutes to get this done every day to do your 10 posts a day. Um, content is super important now, you guys. You got to get to the point you have less than 22 seconds to capture their attention. 22 seconds or less to capture their attention. So having a very lengthy thing in, uh, as an ad is uh, they're not going to take the time to read through it. Okay, they're just not. Most of them aren't going to do it. You got 22 seconds of caption. So emojis, uh, humor, uh, memes are even good. There's different things that you can do to try to capture their, their information. You know, like I said, less than 22 seconds. Okay. Um, Excuse me, Mike, real quick question. Okay. When we're talking about lead generation versus CRMs, it's all one in the same, correct? Based on what you've done. Well, said. CRM is different than an all-in-one system. So just a CRM just means you might have drip campaigns, but you don't have the lead generation capability. Oh, okay? Meaning okay. you don't have a website with an IDX that you can use to go out and post ads out on social media, and then they can log into your website. Okay. okay. CRM is just a place where you, where you put information about your clients and you can send drip campaigns to them. And that's it. Okay. Thank you. That's the difference. So if you're going to do, <coughs> if you're going to do lead generation, you're going to need an all-in-one system. Okay. Okay. There are ways to do it without it, but I'm going to encourage you to do it one with it because it's just going to, it's a lot more automated and a lot easier to do. Yeah. Um, uh, 10 posts a day, content, super important. Uh, emojis, things like that to capture their attention is going to be great. It needs to be short to the point and capture Like, wow, check out this three bedroom, two bath home in Mesa on the golf course with Mountain View. Right. Amazing. You know, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, that's a simplistic version of it. I had an agent one time to put a meme out there, and it was the Pillsbury dough can, and it was popped. Okay, so it had a person mm -hmm. that had it in their hand, and it was popped. And 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 it said, "Does your home feel like this? Looking to upsize? You know, something like that." And it was great because it got so many responses and conversations uh, in the Facebook group, and so she had a lot of contacts that way. I had another person that did just a simple text. All they text in, they went into a buy, sell, rent group on Facebook. And I'm going to cover that in just a second. But they posted a simple phrase or, or sentence. They posted a sentence and it said, what's keeping you from buying a home today? Question mark. And that was it. Got 13 responses of people that said it was down payment, credit, things like that. So you can bet she DM'd every single person, private message them, and, and uh, encouraged to have a conversation because there's free credit repair services out there. And there's obviously credit uh, uh, programs and things like that. So, so uh, our down payment, down payment assistance programs as well. So you can, like I said, 22 seconds or less to capture attention. There's a lot of different ways to go out and do this. Okay. Um, 
consistency, 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 track your business. How many people opt into the system? How many people you talk to in the system? All that so you can get your numbers that way as well. Any questions on that? I'm not gonna go deeper into it. I can't give you examples because none of you actually have a system yet. Uh, once you do, reach out to me. Uh, we've got classes and things that we can, we can help you with and, and what those posts look like and how to create one, all that stuff. Okay, any questions on lead generation? Okay, all right. So let's move into database sphere, okay? So, oh, actually, let's go touch on farming for a second, and then we'll get a database spirit. <clears throat> so farming. So farming is the long game, okay? Farming is something that you, you, you don't just do once. You don't just do it one year. It's something that is, is a marathon. It's not a sprint. And farming can be expensive, okay? So if you're going to start out farming, I would suggest starting out in your, in the, in your area that you want to cover or your niche area that you want to start out in. And start it with like at least maybe a hundred homes if you're going to do that because it does get very expensive to do farming. And then as you close transactions, you can start setting aside money out of your transaction um, to go towards the, the farming because it is the long game. Now there's a thing called circle prospecting, which is um, something you should always be doing. That's your just listed, your just sold, your things like that that you're going to be marketing to a specific area. That's something you can do all the time. That's less less expensive. Okay. Uh, but if you're going to farm, it is the long game, um, and, and you may not get anything for an entire year. So you could spend 250 bucks for a year and might not get anything yet. But it does pan out in the long run. There's a lot of great people out there that have been doing farming for years and get a high percent, percent return. And when I say high percent, like 14% uh, like return is a really good return on that. But you think about it, if you're doing 1,000 homes and, and got a 14% return, that's pretty good, right? So you can see where the numbers work out. So, um, um, so farming, I can get into more of that if you like, but uh, title companies are great to start farming. They can help with some different things that they have and systems and things like that. Uh, any questions on that? Okay, I'm gonna get into database sphere. So database sphere, this is the number one thing. Uh, like I said, you should be doing this all the time. Uh, um, and basically this is how I do it, okay? So nobody goes into my database that's not invited in. So don't just put a bunch of names in your database and then start dripping on them because what's going to happen is they're going to start to unsubscribe from your system. And I trust me when I tell you that one of those people that unsubscribe would have been a great referral source for you. Okay. So invite people into the database. All right. So now what I do is I break my database down into three, three categories. All right. So, I have I have what's called my my friends, family, okay. I have my clients, I can't type today, client, and then I have my power partners. Okay. So there's the three categories that I break it down in, okay? So how do we start building the database? Well, we're gonna start with your sphere, okay? We're gonna start with your sphere first. And I usually start with my phone. So I'm gonna go through my entire phone. And uh, I don't know how many names you have in your phone, but uh, if you, I have over 2,000 people on my phone, so it would take a while to get through it, but start with your phone. And you can pick a letter a day if you want, go through the A's, B's, C's, D's, you can go that way if you want, or you could just start by the first person in your list and work your way through it, it's up to you. Um, but start with your phone. It's a great way to clean out your phone too, get it up to date. So I always make three to five calls a day and no more than five to 10 minutes a call. Okay, no more than five to 10 minutes a call. All right, now my script is simple. So for my database to invite them in, there's two types of scripts that I work with. The first one is what I call a reconnect call, okay? So not everybody in my phone have I talked to on a regular basis. In fact, I might not have talked to more than six months. 
So if, I haven't, if you haven't talked to that person in a long time, you're gonna use this reconnect call. And it's pretty simple. And make it your own, but basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, hey, Joe, it's Michael, how are you? And they're gonna say, oh, I'm doing good. And I'm saying, yeah, I'm so sorry, Joe, it's been so long since I, 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 we've talked, I've been out of touch. Uh, um, I, I know it's been, it's been busy, but I'd really love to catch up with you and reconnect with you. Do you have 10 minutes for a call or do you have time to meet for coffee? Now, I know in COVID, it's a little harder to meet for coffee, um, but it's still possible. Um, I do like the face-to-face, -face, but I know in these times, it's a little harder. So um, as see if they have 10 minutes. If they don't, schedule something for, for, to catch up with them on a phone call, okay? Now, you could say, I was thinking about you on my way to a meeting if you want, and I know it's been a long time since we talked. First, I just want to apologize for not being uh, more in touch with you. I'd love to reconnect with you. Uh, do you have 10 minutes to catch up, or, would you, or maybe we could schedule a coffee or a time to catch up? And that's my reconnect call, okay? If they have the time to catch up for 10 minutes, catch up with them, and that's all you do, okay? You're going to just catch up with them. You're going to start with them. Tell me about it. How's it going with the family? How's it going? You know, find out everything. Let them catch you up with what's going on with them. What ends up happening at the end when they're done um, giving you an update? What do they usually say? What's going on with you? How are you doing? Right? So they'll use them with that. Now that can lead into the uh, to your script now what you're going to do is catch them up with you how it's going with your family what you've been up to and then you're going to end with the, the quick oh I, I don't know if you know but i got my real estate license and uh or if you've been doing real estate and you may or may not know i've been doing real estate for a while that's been really keeping me busy through this time and then you're going to just briefly talk about you know your exciting career in real estate and then you can lead with the you know if if would you feel comfortable referring me uh, anyone that might need help in real estate? And then you can end it with that. All right. But the call is more about reconnecting. It is about you selling your business. Okay. Catch up with them. When they ask you how you're doing, you're going to let them know in your real estate. And then, then you can end it with the invite into the database. So you call them up with everything. You let them know your real estate. And if they would feel comfortable referring you to someone that might need real estate help, and then you can end it with, by the way, would you like to receive some information about the real estate market? You can invite them into your database. Okay. And the only put them in the database if they want to be in there. If they say no, they don't want any information, well, you can put them in a database, but make sure they're not on a drip campaign and you can just put it in as a friend to keep continue to follow up because at some point it might turn into a client, okay? Now, most systems have a way to tag everybody that's in the system. So conversion has what's called hashtag, and so I can hashtag them for everything. So I'm gonna hashtag them if they're, if, if they're a friend, family, if they're a client or power partner, I'm gonna hashtag that. I can hashtag if they're a buyer. I can hashtag their buyer up to 350,000. I can hashtag them East Valley. You see where I'm going with it? You're gonna hashtag everything that you know about that because my system will allow me to pull a report and I'll say, show me all my buyers under 350,000 that are buying in the next three months. And my system will pop up all the people that fit that criteria. You see how this is a powerful way to market to your sellers. So if you have a new listing coming up, you're gonna be able to send um, you know, your new listing to all those buyers that fit that criteria. Does that make sense? So your system becomes a very, very powerful system if you're putting everything in there, all the information about everybody in your system. Any questions so far on the reconnect call? Okay, now if it's someone that you have talked to or you do talk to on a regular basis, it's just going to be my indirect ask call, okay? And here's how the script goes. Uh, hey, Joe, it's Michael with my home group. How are you today? And they're going to say, great, Michael, how are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. Hey, I was just thinking about you on my way to a meeting. And as you may or may not know, I'm a, I'm a real estate agent. You probably know that already. Um, but I was just want to remind you that I'm in real estate. And I was wondering if you feel comfortable referring me to anyone that might need real estate help. That simple. And of course, most of the time they're gonna say yes because they're your friends. And you say, great, um, I just wanna make sure you know you have all my contact information. I'll shoot you a quick test and text. And by the way, would it be all right if I, I, I sent you some information about the real estate market? So I'm gonna invite them into the database. 
Now, I've done three things with this call, okay? Number one, I've reminded that person that I'm in real estate. Now, they don't always think about you as a real estate agent, right? Most of your friends think about you as friend. They don't think about you as friend and realtor. So it's just a reminder that you're letting them know that you're in real estate. The second thing I did was I didn't hit them over the head with business. I asked them if they would feel comfortable referring me to someone that might need real estate help. So what I've done there is I triggered their subconscious to think about it, whether they, whether they like me or not whether they know or not, but it's gonna trigger their brain to think about if they actually know somebody. And then the third thing that I did was I invited them into the database. Remember, I said, no one goes into the database that's not invited in. I'm gonna get, when I get into the conversion rate of database, this is why. So make sure they wanna be there, okay? Um, remember these calls are no more than five to 10 minutes. You've got a lot of business to work on. So you've got, you know, however many database calls that you make during the day. You've got your open house planning that you got going during the day. You got your farming, you got your lead generation, right? You've got, you've got your classes to stay sharp and all the different pillars that you're, you're focusing on. You've got a lot to do during your day. So don't spend hours on a conversation. So these calls should be no more than 10 minutes. Remember when I started the call, I said I was on my way to a meeting. I was thinking about you on my way to a meeting. So when the, co when the call starts to approach 10 minutes, you can remind them that you have a meeting to go into that you can catch up with them at a later date, okay? These can be coffee calls too if you wanna, you know, um, if you wanna schedule coffee appointments for some of these, you can. But more importantly, I think it's just great to do a 10 minute quick call, remind them you're a realtor, invite them into the database, and then get them in the database, okay? Any questions on those two scripts? No, pretty simple, right? So in this time of COVID, this is why these, you can do all of these as calls. They don't have to be appointments, but during COVID, this is a great way to just catch up with them, see how they're doing through this, through this period, what's going on with them, and uh, staying in touch with them. You know, this is what I call a time of building trust equity. It's not about the business, it's how are you, generally, how are you? How are you doing? Is there anything I can help you with? Because what you're gonna do is once you build this database, you're gonna have two types of calls every day that you do, and I call them give back calls and gratitude calls, okay? And I make two calls every day, and it's only three to five calls a day, but you're gonna just call someone. Just If someone reached out to you and they referred you someone, or they just reached out to see how you're doing, you're gonna call back the next day and say, hey, I just really appreciate you taking the time to call me yesterday and see how I was doing. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. That's a gratitude call. There's a lot of different things you can be grateful for and reach out to people and thank them for it, okay? Make a couple of those calls a day, it goes a long way. The second call is just the how are you, what I call the give back call. And you go, hey Joe, it was such a pleasure talking with you today, or yesterday, I just wanted to see if there's anything I can do for you today. Is there anything you need? Anything you need help with? Anything I can help you with? It's that simple, that's a give back call. And you'll be surprised at, at, at how, how, much, how far this will go. And a lot of times, this is where the Power Partners comes in and we get into next, is where you're gonna start referring a lot of these people to things they need. So if they need a landscaper, or if they need a window repair, or if they need a car dealer, or they need a hairstylist, whatever it is, you know, you're gonna be able to refer. That's part of the give back. When I started doing the give back, I had a lot of people ask me, do you know someone in this field? Do you know someone in that profession? And yes, you are the concierge of everything. You, you need to remind everyone you're the focal point. You're the person they, they need to go to if they have questions for anything. They need a financial advisor. If they need, you know, a CPA, you know, whatever they need, you want to be the go-to person, okay? So um, be that for everyone. Uh, so that's what I do. You, you're going to, once you get through your database, get everybody in there. You're going to add people every day from your open houses and from your referrals, things like that. You're going to add them in there, but be doing your gratitude and give back calls every day. I'm telling you, if you really want to build your business, make those calls every day. It's going to blow your mind. Okay. Um, any questions so far? No. I haven't even looked at the chat. <laughs> Everybody's good so far? All good stuff? Everything going, everything good so far? Okay. Can you say uh, what you said about referrals? You said if you feel comfortable, can you reiterate what you said? Yeah, when someone gives you a referral, that's when you're gonna put them into your database. And so, but I mean, sorry, the, the script. The script? Yeah. Which one, the give back call, the gratitude to give back, or the um, just basic and direct ask? Indirect ask, yeah. Okay, indirect ask can be 
whoever you're calling, you're going to know their name. So you're going to say, hey, Danielle, it's Michael, my home group. How are you today? And you say, great. I'm going to say, well, the, um, I was just thinking about you on my way to a meeting. And as you may or may not know, I'm a realtor. Mm -hmm. And I was just wondering if you feel comfortable referring me to someone that might need help with real estate. Okay, perfect. Okay. And then you're going to say, and by the way, once they say, yeah, of course, I'd, I'd be happy to refer you. Great. I'm going to shoot you my contact information. Can you please confirm yours just so I have your, all of your contact information? And by the way, would it be okay if I sent you some information about the real estate market? And that's my invite to the database. So I'm reminding them a realtor, triggering their subconscious if they know anybody that might need help in real estate, and I'm inviting them into the database with that script. Okay, perfect. Yeah, okay, yeah. And then, um, um, any other questions? So far, anybody? We're all good? Okay. All right. So now, I'm going to break my database down three more times, okay? So I'm going to have, I have my fa friends, family, clients, power partners, okay? Can move this over. Here we go. And I'm going to have my what i call raving fans or a lot of people recognize it as top 100. okay my second category is going to be my connectors and then my third one is followers okay. um now, you're going to uh, break down your database three more times. I make it simple. You can make it as complicated as you want. But my raving fans, what that means is nobody goes into my raving fan section that isn't helping me with my business all the time. Like Emily, uh, always reaching out to help me with my business, right? She's always saying, how can I help in any way? Um, your title company, lender, all the, that's all your power partners. If they're helping you grow your business, if you have a lender that just closes deals for you but is not helping you with your business, what I mean by that is providing you know, flyers and, and information that you need to have a successful open house, things like that, then you need to find someone that is. Your power partner should be actively helping you build your business. So they'll go in there too. But nobody goes in there that's not referring me or helping me build my business all the time. Okay? Um, and connectors. These are the people that refer me often. They're not doing it all the time, but they do it once in a while. Okay? They're going to go in there. Now, clients will always start into connectors first. So um, when I have a client, they're always going to go to this, for this, this section first, but then they might gravitate to raving fans or they might go into followers. Now, remember, everybody that said yes is in my database. So if they said yes, but I don't hear from them very often, then they're going to go into the follower section, okay? They're going to go in here, all right? But everyone's going to be tagged, whether they're friends, family, client, whether buyer, seller, you're going to tag them like I talked about, and then they're going to go into one of these categories, okay? You go into one of them. Followers, they hardly ever refer you. Connectors, they, they refer you often. Raving fans, they're constantly helping you with your business. Okay? Now, remember I talked about having drip campaigns. So you're, everybody in your database should be touched 24 to 36 times a year. Minimum. 24 to 36 times. So 24 to 36 times a year should be touching your database. So what do they get? Well, remember, we talked about if they wanted market update, right? So that would be like a monthly newsletter. This is terrible, I cannot, I cannot draw. So I'm gonna go back to the text box. So they should get a monthly newsletter. Okay, that's it. Followers, that's all they're gonna get because they, they're not referring you, they're not reaching out to you often, but you're at least dripping on them so they, so they you are getting something every month. Connectors, they're gonna get a monthly newsletter. They're gonna get a um, market update, birthdays, holidays, okay? Now, if I go back up to here, monthly newsletter is 12 times. Market update is at least four times, right? Because every quarter, birthdays is once. Holidays, 
has at least eight different holidays out there, right? That's 25 touches right there. 25 touches. This should be automatic. Now, birthdays, I go out to Facebook every day. Every day I go out there, and I know I'll probably miss a few here and there, but most of the time, every day I'm going to go out there and type happy birthday. I consider that automated. Okay. Now, raving fans. Raving fans, they're going to get, they get everything connectors get and personal touch. Okay. Now, what do I mean by personal touch? So, Basically, instead of typing happy birthday on Facebook, you're actually going to call them. Now, remember, people in your raving fans, your top 100, they're helping you all the time with your business, referring you all the time. They're helping your business. So you need to be calling them, having lunch with them. I know it's harder in COVID, um, but you're going to be calling them. You're going to be thanking them. Handwritten notes. You're going to... Um, uh, uh, it's free training day. There's a lot of different things you could do on this, right? But this is personal touch. You're going to be very involved with them because they're very involved with you and your business, okay? So um, an example, you might have lunch with someone that's referred you three deals. You close one transaction, you're working with two more buyers, and this person's referred you, okay? So not only did you send out a thank you, but you made a personal call each time they sent you someone, right? You're constantly staying in touch with your database. But now it's time, hey, this person's really going to be helping me build my business. I'm going to get to know them a little more. I'm going to invite them to lunch. So I invite them to lunch. I'll take them to lunch. Now remember, when you do something like a lunch or a breakfast or coffee, it's not about you. It's about them. Okay? It's all about them. So it's not about how much more business you're going to get. No, it's about thanking them for the business and learning more about them. So uh, if I'm at lunch, I'm going to see how they're doing, what, what they're doing in business, and if there's a way I can help them with their business. Because they're helping with me with mine, I'm going to see how I can help them with theirs. Okay, and so there's a lot of things you can learn. For example, um, if you took them to lunch and they're in sales too, and they start, they talk about how they're growing their business and building their business, and you're learning about their business, and they talk about, um, you know, uh, you ever hear that book, Seven Loves of Communication? Uh, yeah, I have. Michael Meyer, it's a great book, and uh, yeah, I've been thinking about getting that book. Well, what's one thing that remember when I told you to open houses, your mental note machine is on all the time? Same thing in these meetings. It's on all the time. Any new information you get, you're going to write it down. You're going to put it in the database. Now, if that's how my lunch went, I, lunch went with that person and I learned about their business, but they also share with me they were interested in getting that book, what well, might be something you do? Buy the book. <laughs> Drop it off at their office with a handwritten thank you card, for, you know, for lunch. It was great meeting them. Enjoy this book on me. So it might be something you do. Now, I know, um, you know, you know, you want to work your way to that point, but handwritten notes go a long way as well. But as you build your business, you're going to have funds for these kind of things. So you should have a business account that you put a little bit away on each transaction for things like this, for your business lunches coffees, things like that. Um, you can create something like that. But be aware of everything that's going on with them. Learn about them. They like the fact that you remember that. If they just got married, if their kid just got accepted into Yale, or those are things of personal touch that you're going to re reach out personally and congratulate them for those things. Okay? So you're constantly involved with them on, on the personal touch. A couple other things of personal touch would be uh, annual reviews. Uh, Sylvie, do you do your annual reviews with your client? Carol, do you do annual reviews with your clients? Yes. Okay. These are important touch points, you know. And in fact, I'm encouraged to do biannual reviews. So every six months, you should be reaching out to see how they're doing, if there's anything they need. It's a simple give back call. Such a pleasure working with you six months ago. I don't know if you know, but you, I just sent you an email with a current market update. Uh, it's, it's, it's amazing. Uh, you've enjoyed 3.6% uh, appreciation so far. If you have any questions on that, reach out to me. Hope you're doing well. If there's anything you need, you know, that kind of thing through that personal call. Okay, um, then you can do an annual review and do the same thing. Reach out to them. Stay top of mind. Those are personal touches. Um, um, things like that. Holidays, of course, you, you reach out personally, not just an automatic email or automatic uh, card that goes out. 
There's a lot of different services and things you can use to do those automated touches. Sunnote cards, for example. Um, there's a lot of mortgage companies that you can get the market update. You, they, they will send it out to your entire database. You can, you can partner with them on that. There's no cost, I, I believe, at those things. But there's a lot of different things you can do. I combined my, I, my monthly newsletter with, with my market update. I've done that before, too. You can do that as well, okay? So personal touch, personal touch. All right, any questions so far? Okay, good. So remember, nobody goes into your database that's not invited in, okay? And then you're gonna tag them and put as much information about them. They're gonna go into one of these categories down here, They're your top 100, your connectors, your followers. They're gonna go in there and then you, yeah, I, I know this is, sounds overwhelming, but it won't be once you get it dialed in. It's gonna be a pain in the butt to begin with, especially if you've been in the business a while, it's gonna be a pain in the butt to get this going. Those of you that are new, start this now, stay on top of it, work your database every day, and when, when as it continues to grow, you're gonna thank me for it because it's a great way that, that it's reaching out to your database automatically and personally. It's a powerful thing, okay? So, so this is the simple way to break it down. Um, now I wanna get into power partners, okay? Power partners are a very important part of your business, okay? So um, power partners, there's two groups of power partners, okay? So the, the, the first group is everything to do with the house, okay? Everything to do with the house. So your title company, your lender, um, home warranty, Um, your mover, I know Emily's on here, so having a mover that you can refer to, right? Yeah, um, but anything to do with the house, landscaper, uh, windows, cleaner, um, oh man, uh, uh, there's a lot, right? Roofer, electrician, okay? Uh, plumber, so on, so on, okay? Everything to do with the home. Contractor, um, now title and lender will be a sit-down meeting. Everyone else could be a phone call, uh, even though Emily does like to come and meet people. So if you, as a realtor, um, you can reach out to her. I think she put her information in there. There's a lot of cool things they do and, and things they offer, but um, um anything to do with the house, okay? You're gonna make a list of that so that you can refer to your sellers, buyers, all these people. Now, anybody that goes into your Power Partners list, um, anybody that goes into that list, well, Emily just said coffee or lunch on her, so that's pretty exciting. Um, very cool, thanks, Emily. Um, anything that they have to do with the house, okay? Um, you wanna make sure they, that the most important thing they do is take care of your client, okay? You care more about the taking care of the client in this section than you do about getting referrals, okay? So even though database is about getting referrals, but when it comes to this group of people, you care about them taking your clients. You will get refer, taking care of your clients. You will get referrals out of this section, but you're not really looking for it in this section. You want them to absolutely take care of your client. The reason is, if something goes wrong during this, what ends up happening? You, the realtor, get blamed, right? So it all goes downhill and all ends up with the realtor and then it goes south and then that the, your reputation with the client deteriorates a little bit. Even though we can sometimes save that relationship, we can, but the damage has been done, right? Because whether they didn't close on time or if the landscaper did a terrible job, um, you know, if the cleaner, you know, doesn't even look like they cleaned the house, you name it, there's a lot of reasons that could affect the relationship with your client. And then what happens when that happens? Well, not only do they, they blame the person that did it, but they'll go and tell everybody. So that means less referrals. So you wanna make sure that everybody in this group takes exceptional care of your client. Now I have an electrician that I've worked for over 20 years. In fact, his daughter just got her license and um, uh, she has joined my home group, so we're excited about that. But uh, I've been working with him for over 20 years. And I tell you every single time that he has done, that I referred him to a client, I get a phone call from the client. Every time I've gotten a phone call saying, thank you so much. 
for referring me to Will. He's done such an amazing job. Not only did he fix everything at a reasonable price, he took care of an extra couple of things that, that, that we weren't aware of. Uh, just an amazing guy. Thank you so much for referring him. <clears throat> and that warms my heart because that means my client got taken care of and they're more likely not only to refer Will, but they're gonna remember me, the agent, because I'm the one that referred them to them. So that's what's so important about, about this group, okay? Now, the second group, the second group you do care about getting referrals in, okay? This is where you do care about getting referrals. Now, this can be a CPA, this can be a, a, a divorce lawyer, a divorce attorney. I'm gonna abbreviate some of this stuff. Uh, you know, real estate, actually real estate attorney be on both sides but a real estate attorney, um, uh, business owners, uh, car dealer, the list goes on and on, okay? You're gonna build this list out. Uh, Hairstylist, I don't even know if that's how you say it these days. Um, like I said, business owners, hairstyles, CPAs, divorce attorney, you, the list can go on and on and on, okay? You're gonna build this list out. Uh, but you do care about getting the referrals in here. And these are sit down meetings, okay? Same with your title and your lender, it's a sit down meeting that you're gonna sit down with them because this is about building your business. Now, um, I'm gonna go back to Open Houses Database and Lead Generation for a second because I wanna talk about what I call conversion rates, okay? And the reason I'm going back to this is because this is how I get the meetings with the CPA, divorce attorney, all these people, right? Here's how I get the meeting, right? So if I'm tracking your business, like, like we talked about, so you're tracking how many people came to your open house, how many people you talked to, which then will turn how many people you're working with and so on and so forth, right? So I'm going to give you an example. So the average is like one in 34 for open houses. So for every 34 people you talk to about real estate and open house, there's an opportunity, right? So if you track that you have 50 people through a month, right? And then on lead generation, it's about one in a hundred. So for every hundred people that opt into your system, there's an opportunity. So if you're averaging 50 people a month through your lead generation, that's about 85 people a month that you're in front of on average, right? People that opt in your system, you're calling, or they're coming through your open house. Well, I use these numbers for my meeting, and here's how my script goes to get a meeting with the power partners. Hey, Mr. CPA, this is Michael with my home group. You came highly recommended from Danielle. Danielle uh, said I should meet with you. Uh, I'm looking to grow my business. I was wondering if you have time for coffee, 15, 20 minutes for coffee um, or lunch, or, or these days with COVID, you can schedule a Zoom meeting schedule a 20 minute Zoom meeting with them to discuss business, okay? And uh, so once you get the meeting scheduled, you're then going to um, meet up with them. So now I'm at the meeting. So I've gotten the meeting um, and now I'm at the meeting and say, Mr. CPA, thanks so much for, for meeting me. Uh, you came highly recommended from Danielle. And uh, basically I'm looking to grow my business. Now, and I'm looking for like-minded people to do the same. And I'm in front of on average about 85 people a month that may, may or may not need your services. So <clears throat> I was wondering if you'd be you know, interested in working with me, right? And they're gonna say, of course, yeah, I'd love to, I'd love to do it. Well, tell me a little bit about your business. So now I'm gonna interview the CPA and I'm gonna ask, how long have you been in the business? How many realtors they're working with? How many people on average they're in front of a month? Now I say the realtor one, how many realtors are working with? I don't open with that. I, I literally close with that because if they're working with, you know, five realtors, even three realtors, I may not want to work with them because I want to, I want to be number one or number two, right? If they're in front of enough people, I want to be someone they're going to refer to constantly. So, and I usually end with saying, well, I'm looking for like-minded people. Thanks so much for meeting with me, but my commitment is to really help you grow your business. And I make, I make five, three to five calls a day, or what I call give back calls, um, to help my clients, my database, if they're in need of your services. So I make that many calls a day. That's what I'm committed to doing to help you grow your business. And does that sound like something you're interested in doing? Because you're looking for like-minded people. You want them to be helping you build your business too, not just to help them build theirs. Make sense? You need to make it clear in the meeting that you're expecting reciprocation, okay? 
Any questions on that script? Make it you. It's pretty simple. You're, you're going to break down how you go about referring people to them, and you're looking for like-minded people. You're looking for someone that is looking to refer back to you. You need to make that clear in that meeting. Don't just make it clear that you're going to commit to helping them build their business. You're expecting them to help you build yours. Okay, and then you're going to keep tabs on it. So as you make your three to five give back calls every day, and you start referring people out to all the, everyone in this group. You're going to start tracking how many referrals you gave to them. If they referred you anyone, how their how they their service worked. Did they take care of your client? You know this is important that you do that. Now there's a book called The Law of Success. It was written by Napoleon Hill. And if you're all probably familiar with Napoleon Hill, but in there is a chapter on this very thing, working with like-minded people. I like to call it the power of the mastermind. Having enough like-minded people helping each, each of us wanting to grow each other's business. It's a powerful thing. Imagine if you had nine other people in this group, in, in, in this group here, if you have nine other people in this group besides yourself and everybody every day is making three to five calls a day to help each other grow their business. Can you imagine how much more your business is going to grow? It's going to exponentially grow. Okay. Do you see the power in this? This is a very powerful thing. So this is why it's important to have a sit down meeting and I guess in COVID or at least have a, a zoom meeting and you're going to make it clear that you're going to commit to helping them build their business. You're looking for their commitment to help you grow yours. If they're not, and you referred four or five people over, they referred you none over the last few months, then you're gonna have a conversation about that. Because there is somebody that will do the same for you. Okay, it's finding those like-minded people. Okay. Any questions so far? No? Okay, everybody's good with that? Okay, oops, I didn't mean to erase that other section, but, um, if you do this right, okay, if you do this right, the average conversion rate, if you were to Google this, is 3.74%. I'm gonna use 3%, okay? If your conversion rate off your database is just 3%, okay, and you have 100 people that wanna be in there, that's three deals a year, right? Three more deals a year for paying attention to them and following up. If you had 500 people, in your database, that's 15 deals a year, right? 850 is the magic number. 850 is 25 and a half deals, I believe, and or a 150,000 150, plus year business. Okay. The magic number is 850. The reason that's a mag oops. The reason this is a magic number is because when you reach that number of people in your database, it starts to build on itself. You'll start getting the referrals and things and it'll sustain. That's usually the number they say is the magic number, 850 people. But if you had 850 people in your database that want to be there and you are following up, not only with the automatic uh, uh, emails and touches, but your personal touches and you monitor this database, you can see how powerful the database can be. It's the number one thing you need to do, build your database. Now, I know we just got a few minutes left and I've, I've had to kind of go through this. Technically, each, each pillar that I've gone through could be a whole class in itself, a whole two hours, because there's just so much information. But the idea of this class is to really get started, is to have a goal, in the beginning, right? Have a goal where you want to go. You want to get hyper focused on how to get there, and then you got to take action, take the steps, break it down. What you need to do in each pillar of business to reach your goal. Okay. Now, we spent two hours. Okay, two hours. I'm going to erase some of this. I like to close with this. We spent two hours going off, going over how to get your business started, what you're going to do to build your business. Okay. Now. I usually like to, I'm gonna go ahead and do it this way here. But none of it, if you don't mind me being blunt with all of you, none of it means crap if you don't do what? You're all on mute, so I can't hear anybody. Follow up. <laughs> what, you don't do what the you gotta work. do? You What's gotta do the most the important thing to do? You gotta do the work. I'm sorry? You have to do the work. Do the work is good. 
Anybody else? Reach out. I'm sorry? Reach out constantly. Reach out. I when I said it in the very beginning, the first thing you have to do is commit to oh, one yeah. M, right? One M or two M's. Two M's, one T. You got to commit, okay? Mm -hmm. And then more importantly than that, or not just as important than that, is you have to believe it's going to happen, mm -hmm. okay? Once you've made the commitment here and here, you have to truly commit to this. You've got to commit with all your heart that you're going to do this. And then you've got to believe it's going to happen. Every day, you need to be it's positive affirmations every day that you're going to hit your goal. Now, life gets in the way. We know that. It's going to happen. That's okay. But the beautiful thing about it is you can ask yourself these questions. What got in the way? Okay. It's unavoidable. That's understandable. Can I recommit? Yes. Recommit. And then just keep going. Just don't give up, okay? The next thing you have to do is get focused. That's why I mentioned being hyper-focused. you got to be hyper-focused. That's when we said to focus on two or three things, okay? Now, the other thing is having a clear mental vision. Clear mental vision. Usually I draw a line on these things here so that it separates it. Oops. I just screwed that up. I don't know what I did, but <laughs> so, um, I screwed that up. I'm sorry. But you have clear mental vision, okay? <laughs> and this, what I mean by, by this is there's a couple great books on all of this stuff. So I already told you about Napoleon Hill, Law of Success. That's a great book. Raving Fans is another amazing book that you can read. Um, um, the, Mr. Schmooze is another great book that you can read, uh, Seven Levels of Communication. You heard me mention that. That's another great book that you can read. Atomic Habits is another great book to read. Um, the list goes on and on there. Uh, uh, as far as clear mental vision, there's a book called The Shadow Effect by uh, Deepak Chopra, Marion Williamson, W. Ford. I hope I didn't butcher his name too bad, but a uh, great book. And it's all about getting clear, you know, getting really clear. Um, <clears throat> it's a deep book, but it's a good book. But you've got to have clear mental vision. You've got to know where you're going. You've got to see yourself being successful. You've got to feel successful. Be, you know, be positive and, and never give up. And then what you all said before, the last one was to take massive action or be wildly consistent. You have to never give up. Just keep moving in that direction. Keep asking questions. Keep taking classes on the, on the, on the pillars of business that you're focused on. Um, just keep moving forward. Keep writing things down, tracking your business, learning from those things, what's working, what's not working. If you do these things, you're going to be uber successful in your real estate career. Okay. And sometimes, sometimes, or not sometimes, it doesn't always happen overnight. Being in real estate's a marathon. It's not a sprint. Okay. But if you're committed, you get consistent, consistent, and you keep moving forward, you're going to be very successful in this business. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, any questions? It's two minutes over. Any questions at all? Mm -mm. I'd love to hear from you, each one of you. Was this class worth it? Yes. <laughs> Very much so. Yeah. Did you learn some things out of here? Sylvie, did you, did, was it a good class? Yeah, maybe you lost her. <laughs> Derek, I know you were on here too, or did, did we lose him? Was he here too? No, I thought the class was awesome. Thank you for the, thank okay. you for everything. I'm here for you. Kelly's here for you. We're all here for you. Um, so if you have questions, please reach out. But this should give you a pretty good outline of where to begin, what to do. Um, so if you need any help, we're here for you guys, okay? Any questions at all? Emily, thanks for hanging in with us. Again, uh, muscular movement men, they're awesome. You guys reach out to her, schedule a coffee or a schedule a meeting with her, learn about what she does. <coughs> and Kelly, thanks for setting everything up. Yeah. Any awesome. questions? Thanks, Michael. No, you guys all have a great day. If I don't you see you before too. the 4th, have a great day. Thank you. Happy Thank you. Thank you. July. Have a nice day. Thanks, Bye, guys. Bye.